good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And we're thankful that we can be. I feel like this morning that we are uh, more blessed than usual. It seems like it, the Lord has just come in and, and uh, helped us, and, and we're, we, we thank the Lord for it. We want to study this morning a little bit in chapter 8 of the book of Romans. Uh, we want to talk to you just a little bit in the first verse there. The, uh, uh, I would say also, my brother Larry's already mentioned about our start of the new year. We do really need to be more concerned about ourselves, our, our own soul salvation, be concerned about how that we're serving the Lord, be more, more steady to uh, seek Him. And uh, I know that uh, we can get things done if we'll stay straight with Him and, and that we'll pray. Because I, I know I've seen things that He's done for me and, uh, and I know He has for others. And uh, those that are sick that we know of, we need to be sincere with the Lord and not just pray for them. And uh, it's, it's a good way to start a, a, a year off. And it's a good way to live a year. It's a good way to end the year. Amen. Stand in the will of the Lord and, and serve Him. So, with that, we want to get into the lesson, chapter 8 of the book of Romans, first verse. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, this word condemnation is the act of one declaring one guilty, in which we were all guilty of sin. We were born in sin. This body will live in sin. This body will die in sin. But this thank the Lord this morning that there is a way that we can <coughs> remedy that through the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, through His calling to us, and that there will not be that condemnation uh, against our spirit. And uh, we know this morning, and we, as the, as the Bible says, the reason here, that uh, it says, who there is therefore now no condemnation to them which walk, which which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And so there is a way, and of course the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ways there are of death. And, and there are so many people this morning that are following false leaders or uneducated leaders or leaders that are called not called to pastor to preach they listen to them and uh, they don't know what they're listening to and they take it and they 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 uh, accept it as the truth and people they're being deceived and I see it more and more and more all the time but here uh, the writer Paul is saying there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So this morning we need to realize this morning that as the Lord God has called us and chosen us and we are His, our soul is not condemned. Amen. It has been bought with a price. His blood, Jesus Christ's blood, and there is no condemnation. There's no, there's, it's not been condemned. And so we this morning should praise the Lord. We should look forward to living another year uh, for the Lord. We should look forward to serving Him with the greatest, greatest thing that we can do is to serve Him. And we should look forward to that this morning and and realize this morning. That we're not condemned. Amen. We're not condemned. Listen, when when that last breath leaves this whole body, this body uh, gives it up. This soul goes to be with the Lord Jesus Christ because it's not been condemned. And the body is, is the body has is paying the death price and that it has sinned, and it's free from it's free too because listen, death is the is the wages of of, of, of a, a body living without the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning I hope I don't confuse anybody by saying this, but we we need to be we need to be 
we need to have the knowledge this morning of what we have. Amen. Because listen, there's there's people in this world that are listening to false prophets and they don't realize what's going on in this world. And so we see here that that he said that Paul, as he was writing, he says, he says, who walk not after the flesh. They are the ones that are not condemned, but but who who walk not after the spirit, but after the flesh. The one that walk after the flesh is condemned. He says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. Now the law of sin is if you do it, if you do, if you break the law, you die. Right. That's it. There's, there's, there was no forgiveness. Now, there was a thing called a sacrifice that they could make that would roll that sin back in the Old Testament. But listen, it did not forgive that sin. But now listen, Jesus Christ came to this world and he paid the penalty. He was, he was a perfect being and Man. he turned himself over to death and let death take his life. And his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. And that blood is the atonement, is the covering for our sins. And we have not a sin in our soul or on our soul to condemn us. And so he's saying there is no more condemnation for Amen. us. And so he says here, he says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. And he's saying the law could not save the law could not do anything, but God permitted them to offer this sacrifice to roll that sin back a year at a time, and and it would it would it would it would just push it back. It wouldn't forgive it. And listen, people, when they died, they didn't go to be with the Father like we will now. And those that are saved, they went to the place called Abraham's bosom. Right. They did not reach heaven. Now, and that's all over with. That's done away with. But the thing of it is, when Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ came to this earth and he died and he went to the the place called Abraham bosom and he preached he preached grace to them he they accepted him as their savior and he led them out and then hell took over Abraham's bosom right and so it's no more it's no more there so we have no we have no uh, uh, thing to 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 encourage us that there will be uh, someone that will pray for us and deliver us from this uh, from this hell that they will go to because listen it's not there it, there's no place there's no place now but hell and heaven and so those that die in the Lord will go to heaven to be with the, the Lord there and they'll wait for their bodies those that go to that die in sin will go to hell They'll wait for their bodies. They'll all be brought out. They'll be judged and they'll be cast back in. Uh, those that are in hell, those that are that stay with the Lord, they will they will receive their rewards and they will stay with them there. And that's the that's the end of the lost and the saved. But here Paul says here we're not condemned. Amen. We're not condemned to be uh, sent to uh, uh, a place of of, uh, of torments. We are we are already saved, and we're uh, the the sin debt has been paid, and we will be with the Lord forever. And so, I wanted to read you something here, a little bit more here, in uh, I believe it's in verse uh, chapter six. He says. Uh, Notice here in verse uh, 1 of chapter 6 concerning the sin. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now he has preached to them grace. And grace has saved that soul. But listen, they ask the question, hey, shall we just go ahead and continue to sin that grace may have more, uh, uh, may abound more? Or, and they're, they're saying, hey, if, 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 sin, if, if sin can be done away with with grace, can we just go ahead and sin that grace can take care of it and it'll make it more uh, potent or important? No. He, that's not what he's, what he's talking about. He said, God forbid. Listen, when, we, when we're saved, 
We need to understand that we're not under condemnation anymore and that we need to live closer to the Lord and we need, as I mentioned this morning, we need to look forward to this year. We need to look forward to each Sunday, each day of this year that we can come here or that we can be at home. We can study our Bibles. We can be on the workplace, but we can serve the Lord and we can know for sure this morning that we're not condemned. Amen. And listen, it should give us a great, great place to be able to tell other people about the same thing because listen uh, uh, it's a terrible thing this morning and the Bible says it's a terrible thing to fall into the, the hands of an uh, of angry God Amen. and so we don't we, we need to to try our best to tell others and be a witness for them now we want to read just a little bit more in the uh, in the uh, uh, Philippians 2, if you would, you can turn, be turning there. In Philippians 2, and verse 1 through 12. Philippians 2, 1 through 12. Now he says, there, if, there, if, if, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Now, we should this morning by what I have already read saying, and what I said, we should have a great consolation. We should be at ease. And this, this consolation is consoling. It should console our spirit this morning that we are saved and that there's nothing that Satan can do. There's nothing that he can uh, bring about that will cause us any problems as far as after death. Because we're saved with an everlasting salvation. Amen. And, and, and John says that which is born of God does not sin. And so if that is, if that, that, that word is true, and I'm not saying if that word is true, but I'm saying that word is true, then listen, we're saved with an eternal salvation. Amen. And so here he says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. And Paul is saying here, hey, he's talking to these people at the church and he's saying, listen, all of these things I understand and I believe. And I've wrote to you, and I've told you this. And he says, if there, if if you're, if it's, if it's getting through to you, if there be any consolation, if there be any consolement there, he says, in uh, in Christ, uh, he says, fulfill ye my joy. And this morning, it should be our joys towards one another that we can see us fulfilling that joy. And we should have a joy in our heart this morning, people. We should have a smile on our face. We should be happy in spirit. And I know sometimes the old bones and the, and the flesh ache and bother. But listen, we should have a joy in our hearts. Because, Amen. Listen, hey, when I lay down to go to, to die, I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm going to go to be with the Father in heaven. Amen. And, you know, I see it more and more all the time. Listen, uh, so many people think that they're ready and they're not ready uh they they have heard stuff they've heard and got these pats on the back and saying hey you're going to be all right and this is going to be all right listen we need to do some soul searching everybody does you bet. and and make and and, and and pray and ask the lord to to help us to be more assured and be more consoled with this because this is what he says he says fulfill ye my joy and, and fulfill one another. And, and listen, it don't hurt a thing in this world. It will encourage one another if you tell somebody, hey, listen, I had a prayer answered. Uh, I, the Lord spoke to me last night. Amen. The Lord encouraged my heart last night. And uh, I love you. And, and you know, uh, I never will forget what he was talking about Red. And, and I, believe Red, I believe Red was saved. And the last time I the last time I seen him, he hugged me and he hugged me and he said, I love you. And listen, he just did not want to turn loose. And Diane walked up to him and he seen her and he, he put his arms around her and I'm sure he told her the same thing. But listen, people, uh, I believe that he was ready to go and I believe that he knew he was going. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, listen, we as God's people ought to be in that stage all the time ready to go 
and, and thinking, hey, listen, tomorrow tomorrow they may be uh, saying the last song over me. But the thing of this, I'm, I'm ready to go, and there's no problem with that. And, and, and Paul was saying here, just fulfill my joy by telling me or telling one another or, hey, it don't hurt a thing in this world. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you're always with your wife or your husband and to say, hey, I love you. Right. And, uh, hey, uh, I know I'm going to be with you in heaven. Because, listen, that's that's an encouragement to your to your spouse. That's an encouragement uh, because, you know, a lot of times the devil gets in, it gets in people and, and gets into wondering about and worrying about. But listen, encourage one another with this. And he says here, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, that nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Amen. Hey, that shows some love right there. Let, he says, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing. Right. And of course, you know, that's the way of the flesh. The flesh wants me first. But listen, what he says, he says, look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on others, on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I'm sure this morning as he hung there on the cross, listen, he was thinking about me and you. Amen. And thinking, hey, I have overcome death and I'm, I'm, I'm going to overcome it and I'm going to be overcome. I'm going to overcome the grave and I'm going to overcome the devil this morning because you know when, as he was talking to Martha, uh, there in John 3, I believe it is, or, or in there when he was talking about Lazarus, he says, I'm, I am the life, I am the death, I am the resurrection. Amen. And he overcame all of these things. And when he come out of that out of that cave where he was laid in, listen, he was resurrected, he was over, he had overcome all of these, and he says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And so he was, he was, he, he, he done that. And he, Lord, he went to, he come to this earth, lowering himself as a human being. Because listen, notice what he says there. Uh, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion or form as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so he became obedient to death. He let death do what he would. But listen, when it was all said and done, he come out gloriously. Amen. Resurrected. He was over all of it. And hey, he went to heaven and he, he sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat for you and for me that he would call. And listen, we ought to be happy this morning that we know what he did for us. And he sprinkled that blood and it was pleasing to God. And that's where we're at. Because Amen. We're not condemned anymore. We're not condemned. And so these are some of the things this morning that we need to be... Uh, uh, happy about and joyful about and not with a you know uh, uh, sad countenance because listen uh, there ain't nothing but good for us even, even even if even if we have things wrong with this old body hey it's going to die anyway and so we need to think that the spirit the spirit is going to go to be with the one to give it so he said here and we're in verse 9 wherefore God also had Highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name. And here's very important this morning that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. And so we this morning as 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 his as his people, we need to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to tell others about him and, and, and glorify his precious holy name because uh, 
each time you do these things, don't do it, you don't do it because you're wanting to honor the flesh or glorify the flesh, but you do it because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. You love him in spirit, and one day, one day when this is all over, it'll come into remembrance again. And he'll 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 say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And and also he'll have these rewards for you. And you know, you don't do it for the rewards, but the thing of it is you do it because you love him. But the thing of it is these great rewards will be a blessing to you and then a greater blessing when you can lay them down at Jesus' feet and say, Thank Man. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And uh, uh, I don't know how it'll be. I don't know if, if uh, we'll thank him for uh, our loved ones that are there. I don't know. I don't know how it'll be. But we can do it back here. Mm -hmm. We can do that here. And thank him for taking care of our loved ones and watching over them and saving their souls. Right. And bringing them to uh, the point where there's no condemnation. Because this is this is very important this morning, people. Uh, we're just here for a while, and uh, all we're here for is just to get ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and this should not mean anything to us uh, as far as uh, worldly gains or anything like this, but that we're just getting ready to go. So here, here again, uh, uh, in Romans, I, read, I believe I read Romans 6, 12, but it says, not, let not sin reign in your mortal bodies. And uh, so these are the things that, that we, would, we would like for you to see in Romans 6, uh, back in Romans 6 uh, again, uh, in verse 12. I want, you to, I want you to think about this. In verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Now listen to that. The body of sin. That's what... That's what you have right now. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if any, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's saying that our body is dead to sin. It's going to die. But he says here, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign and this word is the key to the whole thing. Reign, to stay there, to be authority over you, to uh, have a, 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 an abode, a, an everlasting abode. But he says here, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal, in this fleshly body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. And with that, you can say there is no condemnation. There is, no, there is nothing this morning that will condemn you, that will change your status, if you would, with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God. You, he has called you, you're living for him, you have accepted it, and you're trying to uh, live a way that would be pleasing to him. And so listen, you have no, you have no worries, you have no problems as far as, as spiritual, because it's all, it's all done and taken care of. Uh, it's, if you want to look at it, it's the greatest insurance policy you'll ever get. It's, it's, it's a permanent thing. It'll never wear out. And it'll always be there. And he's, he's your his. And he's yours. And so serve him uh, each day the way that is pleasing to the Lord. And I thank you for listening. And I hope it's been a blessing to you. Mm -hmm.